What's up, ladies and gentlemen? You are dead smack in the middle of Spiritual Warfare Weekend. I am your host. My name is James Williams. I go by Dog Waters. Recently, I started calling myself the Stankonian Ambassador for the fun of it, but we are in the midst of Spiritual Warfare Weekend, and so far, I'm hoping that you're liking the content. We are hitting on, we already hit on Nephilim. We already hit on with um, with Ryan Peterson. We hit on how God lifts men with my friend Mike Kerr from Hear the Watchmen conventions, where you will see all kind of people like Steve Quayle, everybody was there. And now I'm here with Cliff Buell. Now he told me it's like Bueller without the er, <laughs> but um, it's like Ferris Bueller's Day Off, which is, by the way, if you have not seen Ferris Bueller's Day Off, and you have the younger generation that you need to, after this weekend is over, don't stop right now, Monday, get on like YouTube or get on and go watch Ferris Bueller's Day Off. It is a classic movie that you must see, and it's a phenomenal movie. And it's an 80s movie. You're going to enjoy it. It's not crazy, and it's not woke. But with that being said, Cliff, how you doing today, my friend? I'm doing great, James. I really appreciate you having me on. Oh, man, it's awesome. Thank you for joining me, man. Uh, I want to start here. What made you hop on YouTube and jump into the fire? Because when you talk about Jesus on YouTube, you jumping into the fire. What made you just yeah. hop into the fire, brother? What, what, what got you started? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So um, I'll take it back a little bit. I've always kind of, I mean, I've always, everyone I feel like has been on social media, right? But um, I always wanted to be like an influencer or somebody when I was in college. And at that time I was really in the world. So I, I knew Jesus, I grew up as, as a Christian, um, but at that time I was not living out of Christian faith at all. And uh, I was really heavy on like Snapchat and stuff and just posting like crazy. I think I had like two or 300 followers, right? Nothing crazy. Um, but I was just loving being on, on social media. Um, well, as I kind of moved out of the world back into my Christian walk, back into my relationship with Jesus, um, I moved away from social media more because, you know, as as most people know, it can be very toxic and, yes. and unhealthy. Um, and so I was kind of on and off for for a while. And um, I got married and everything. And my wife and I were, had many conversations kind of about like what the Lord had for us, like our purpose and, and what we should be doing. Um, and the Holy Spirit uh well, the Lord spoke to her about going on, like us going on to social media and the Holy Spirit um, confirmed that with me. And we had already kind of been talking about that before, even before then about like, maybe we should go on social media and start doing some things. Um, so that was kind of the first like, okay, this is something that we should definitely be doing. Um, then with that, uh, the Lord presented a course on how to evangelize online. Um, so I ended up signing up for that, going through that, learning the ropes and it's just kind of history from there. Now, it's actually, we're approaching a year in September. So it has been less than a year. Um, the Lord has supernaturally grown the channels. Um, mm -hmm. It has been a huge blessing. And yeah, I mean, there's there's so much more to come too, like on what the Lord has told my wife and I to do specifically with the social media. And I feel like part of it is my disobedience and delay. Like I have not done all the things I should do up to this point. Um, but I'm just excited because there is, we're like just scratching the surface, I believe, but yeah, that's why I'm here. Man. It's amazing how, when he decides he's going to lift you, there's nothing that can stop that lifting. I've went through the first phase of lifting. I went through, I was kind of, I kind of was lazy through it. It was like, pew, my channel took off. And I was like, wow, look at this. This is awesome. Yeah. And I had to learn a lesson. I was, it was cause I was being told, Hey, Lifting happens quickly, but you need to take advantage of it. And mm. I'm sitting back, chilling, brrr, settles back down. Next lift, boom, I kind of get the understanding of it. And he lifts me again. And I'm talking about shooting from like 60,000 to 200, 300,000 or wherever I was. Yeah. And then he says, okay, now you got it. Let's go again. And this time I was prepared for the lifting. Um, but it's amazing. And most people believe, uh, Cliff, that um, in this realm, which is the earth realm, that Success is what they do. They don't understand mm -hmm. all success is based on a partnership with the spirit. Some people partner with the Holy Spirit. Other people partner with other spirits. And it's amazing yes. because they see it. Guys, I'm sorry. I'm going to stop talking after this. You see it all the time in the media. So you see, well, Kanye West sold his soul to the devil and he sacrificed his mama. And the next thing you know, he was a billionaire. Mm -hmm. They see it playing out from the satanic end, but they don't really understand it from the godly end. And no, it's a partnership with the spirit that benefits you in this realm and yep. if you don't have a partnership you're not going anywhere you, you don't go anywhere all right i'm sorry yep. no I, I probably shouldn't have went that hard but no um, you're you're 100 right with that yeah. yeah um so guys if you don't know cliff's channel cliff touches on a whole bunch of like trending topics from a christian perspective 
And I want to tackle one today that everybody's talking about this thing with Donald Trump and his recent assassination attempt. And I'm seeing Cliff where people are not quite understanding that God chooses who he wants to use. Like mm -hmm. it, it don't matter how we feel about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you look from a biblical perspective, God chose David, right? God appointed Saul, God appointed Cyrus. Like God judges the heart of men. Yep. And people sit there and they say, well, I don't think he can use Donald Trump. What's your thoughts on what's going on right now politically with Donald Trump? Yeah. So I'm not going to sit here and pretend to know, like, I know everything going on in the back end, right? There's all these speculations about whether the assassination attempt was staged or, um, you know, Biden's administration's behind it or whatever. And the FBI being involved, like there's, there's so many things we see out there. And so I'm not going to pretend to know what I'm talking about in terms of that, but from the perspective of what the Lord is doing to me, it is very clear that he is using Donald Trump and people might get upset with that because maybe you don't like Donald Trump. Maybe you don't like his policies. That's fine. Um, I don't really care about that stuff. I, I'll be the first to say that a lot of the things that have come out of Donald Trump's mouth are not presidential like he's not professional in a lot of ways. Right. He can be very just kind of quick, uh, you know, quick to speak. And he he shouldn't be. And and uh, like, that's fine. We can not like those things about him. He's an imperfect human, the same as each and every one of us. Um, but it is clear that the Lord is using him. He opens a bigger platform for Christianity at the end of the day. Like there's no arguing that. Um, he definitely opens a larger platform for Christianity. And truly, if Christ is the end goal, if that's where we want, to, we want to glorify Christ, right? That's our goal. Mm -hmm. Then we should be supporting the things that open up the opportunity to do exactly that. And Donald Trump allows for that, right? He's endorsing, even if he's trying to sell the Bible, who cares? He's endorsing, he's getting the Bible into the more, more hands of more people. We should be praising that. Like, that's amazing. We need more Bibles out there. We need more people reading the Bible. Um, and so I, I keep going back to, and I actually just recorded a video like a couple hours before this. I haven't released it yet, but um, the, the Bible verse um, for Philippians 1.18, Paul literally says that he doesn't care if the motives are true or false, if Christ is being preached, he rejoices, right? And so like, I think I, that's something I had to be reminded of too, not just with politics and Trump, but in general, if Christ is being preached, whether it's someone on social media, someone on TV, someone at the church or in the public squ square somewhere, like wherever they are, if Christ is being preached, we should rejoice in that. You know, like, it, that, I don't know, like that's just what it comes down to. Like if, if Christ truly is what you want, then support the things that are going to open up a platform for Christ to be preached. And that's where I'm at with that. You know, I, I believe that there is a definitely a supernatural tie to this thing. Like with the assassination attempt, I believe that's going to that. I, I think that sealed the deal for him actually becoming president. Um, but I think that's that acceleration of like, yeah, this is going to happen. We're going to put Trump into this appointed position and we're going to see an, an more of an opportunity for Christianity. I know there's a lot of, again, speculation about like end times and what it looks like. If what's Trump's role in that, I'm not going to act like I know what God is doing 100 percent with him. I just know that he is using him for sure. And as Christians, we should be supporting that. No, I'm 100 percent with you, but I can speak from the angle of a political consultant because I was one. OK, um, when you look at what's transpired with Donald Trump, um, you see a man who has been completely radically changed. Mm. And it the reason why most people can't see the radical change in him is because for the past eight years, they've been bombarded with news media saying, painting pictures. Mm -hmm. And the media's job is to paint a picture uh, in your mind as to who a person is. And so what has to happen is over time, that picture has to be erased. Mm -hmm. But from the kingdom of God standpoint, and to be clear with you guys, there are two kingdoms. There's the kingdom of God and there's the kingdom of Satan. Mm -hmm. And you can always tell who's on the good side because they're going to be doing damage to the kingdom of darkness. And they may not be the perfect person. They may curse. They may smoke, but they're going to be doing massive damage to the kingdom of Satan. And so when you look at what he's done. Um, from just a perspective of who he's went after, he's done so much damage to that kingdom. It's utterly and totally ridiculous. Just um, the America first rallies going around uh, that were baptizing people in the name of Jesus Christ in places like Chicago and Detroit. And I mean, if you see that and that's directly a part of his campaign, 
when you see that, that is doing damage to the kingdom of darkness. The problem is that's never on the news. Mm -hmm. So when people see it, they won't, they don't, when they see him, they don't see what's going before him. And the Bible says, if Christ be lifted up, he will draw all men unto him. Mm -hmm. And so Amen. when you see a man going out, lifting up Christ ahead of his campaign, we're talking about a rally in a location before he comes. So it's multiple rallies, it's multiple movements. Well, when you see a campaign lifting up Christ, then you know he's doing damage to the kingdom of darkness. Mm. Now, all the rest of the speculation, whether it was, I mean, the truth about that's going to come out. And I think it's coming out now. They're finding out that the guys assigned were not Secret Service. They were from a part, the Department of Homeland Security. And the Secret Service had been switched out. They're finding out about multiple shooters and all the rest of this. The truth is going to come out about that because it can't be hidden because there's too many cameras. Everybody yeah. and their mama got a camera. You yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you, you really can't hide the truth when it pertains to that. But I'll say this. I watched this speech last night. Um, watched about 20 minutes of it. It was a long speech. And I sat there and I watched and I said, wow, that's not the same man. There was mm -hmm. this peace on this man. And anybody who's had the Holy Spirit, you know, you can feel that peace. That's why they call it the peace that surpasses all understanding. Yeah. Because it's like, whoa. And that, that peace was emanating from him. And I submit to you guys, I think that when that bullet whizzed by that man's ear and he fell on the ground, prior to this, think about it. He had to know his secret service was switched out. He knew it. So he knew he was walking in a death because he's like, yo, where are my regular secret service agents at? Mm -hmm. Who's these people? And he still went. So when you get hit in the ear and you fall on your face, I'm pretty sure he was having a conversation with the Lord. Yeah. And then when you stand up and you walk off and you look around and you're like, man, I should have been dead. I don't see no other way other than um, him coming to the Lord. I, I just don't see it. Or at least that relationship with him and the Lord becoming stronger and stronger and stronger. So, yeah. um, and I think it's a great thing for America, Cliff. What's your thoughts on how it's going to affect America as a nation? Yeah, no, I, I agree with you completely. I, I, again, I believe that this opens up a large platform for Christianity. So, um, I'm I'm honestly kind of curious to see how it plays out. What the Lord like? Because again, I I won't say that I know what the Lord's doing with him. I just know the Lord is using him, and I want to get whatever behind the whatever the Lord's doing. I'm getting behind that, right? I want to be on the same team there, and so yeah, I, I don't know. Like I'm just excited to see what's going to play out. I believe that we are in the last days, so we're going to see a lot of like craziness still surfacing. But at the same time, as America is getting a um, just a bigger platform for Christianity. Uh, I don't know. Like, again, I, I wish I had a, a better answer for you, but I'm just excited and to see what the Lord is doing and continue to just be used by the Lord in the midst of it. You know, like there's always concerns about like social media shutting down any Christian content. And there's already a lot of like shadow banning and that, and that type of stuff. But, um, you know, there's just concerns about it getting worse and worse. And so with something like this, where, where Trump has clearly said, like, we need to allow for Christian content, he literally mm -hmm. used those words, like, create, like content that is pro God, like, we need more of that. So um, to me, that just excites me. That makes me happy. Um, but yeah. No, it excites me as well, because when we start talking about the entertainment industry, what, which is what content creation ends up being, it's the new mm -hmm. form of the entertainment industry. Yeah. When you start to carve out the Christian content, um, and suppress it, then what you're doing is you're elevating everything else. And the entertainment is what starts to set the culture. And as yep. the culture becomes wicked, the culture becomes wicked because of the entertainment and what people are presented. And when they yep. don't have the options to see other things, then it really causes a huge problem. I mm -hmm. mean, I remember like um, in the 90s when gangster rap came out. I mean, that caused mm -hmm. the, everybody near mama was running around killing people, doing crazy <laughs> stuff. And then it got to the point to where people kind of realized, wait, I'm watching this rap video, but this is a video where they cut. So it's like, oh, scene one, cut, scene two, cut, scene mm -hmm. three, cut. And then it dawned on people, man, none of this stuff is real. And then you start to see it kind of taper off a little bit. But it already become a part of the culture. It already yeah. become a part of um, people's bloodlines to behave that way. Um, and it's a huge, huge problem for you guys, ladies and gentlemen. When you talk about Ephesians six, and it talks about the kingdom of darkness, is it put on a full arm, full armor of God? Mm -hmm. No, it talks about um, powers, principalities, and wickedness yeah. in high places. Is what I'm talking about. Um, when you start to get to the wickedness in high places part, that's when wickedness becomes a part of the culture. It's culturalized. So, for example. For America, we clearly have wickedness in high places in our government. 
We see it all day long. Um, did you see the news come about come out about the Ten Commandments going back in school? What were your thoughts on that? Yeah, so I've made a video on this as well. Um, and I'll say first and foremost, like I'm the first person to say that I believe public schools should be neutral ground, right? Which might surprise people. It might be like, what? You don't think that these things should be in the schools? Well, no, I'm very biased towards Christianity. I, I would I love that these things are going into the schools, but I believe that it is not the school's job to um to teach our kids. Christianity at the end of the day. I believe that's the parents' job. Now, where I know that there's a lot of parents who are not doing that, I am grateful when schools are doing that. But to me, that should not be the primary place. So um, I'm all for it. I love it. You know, I, I forget the state that just uh, said that every teacher needs to, in public Oklahoma. school, need to teach the Bible. Oklahoma. Was that Oklahoma? Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and so, so that alone is like, now, now I have two thoughts on that. That alone is awesome because, again, I believe God's word will not come back void. So, yes, get the word in front of people, teach it. But obviously, I, I'm a little weary because I don't know. I didn't. I didn't research this, but I don't know um, if these teachers are being equipped to teach the word, right? Like if, or if it's just kind of them teaching it from their own perspective and potentially twisting it and whatever, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that is that's a genuine concern. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to say no to getting the word out in front of um, more people, more children, especially. Uh, the Bible is very strict on how we train up our children, um, both in the sense of training them up in the way that they should go so that they never depart from it, but right. also that if you cause a child to stumble, it's better that you have a millstone, you know, strung yeah. around your neck and thrown in a leg. Like, literally better that you're dead than causing a, a child to, uh, to stumble. So there's some very, very clear, strict instructions on how we should be training up our children. And I love it. I love that these things are going into the school. Um, and I believe, too, like, like I said, I believe that it should be neutral ground. But the problem is that the enemy has taken so much of that ground mm -hmm. that I feel like we have to try and fight back at this point, right? So like we have these other agendas that are being pushed onto children, things that they shouldn't even be thinking about, right? Like we've had to educate our children here, like at a very young age, these are some of the things you're going to start seeing in the world because it's being thrown in our faces now. And mm -hmm. like we've, we've homeschooled, we've, they've been in public school and one of our daughters is in private school right now. And like, in the public school arena was like literally the second they stepped back into that, there was some crazy, crazy experiences. Um, what uh, my my oldest daughter was experiencing in fourth grade of just kids claiming to either be gay or to identify as the other gender in the fourth grade. And right. I'm like, how do you even like, I'm trying to think like what I was concerned about in the fourth grade and it definitely wasn't what gender I was or like, you know, like, yeah, sure. I might've been like, Oh, that girl's cute or been attracted to the girls, but it's, it's in such a playful way as a child. Like you don't really know what that mm -hmm. all means. And so I don't know, like, it's just, it's hard for me to wrap my head around that, that that is that the enemy is the enemy does not relent. Like he's, he's going for our children, like parents be praying for your children, be protecting them. Be, I always say, teach your kids the truth so they can identify the lies. Like you have to, you have to educate your children like you just do in this in this day and age. You have to protect them in any way possible, but um, don't keep them ignorant. Also educate them. So, uh, yeah, I love that this stuff is coming into the school. Sorry, I, I went off on a little tangent there, but I love that this stuff is coming back into the school, even if it should be a neutral ground. It's not a neutral ground. That's the reality. So yep. bring it back. Bring it back. Bring the Bible back. That's the foundation of our country. And I'll tell you what I know for a fact, without a doubt, ladies and gentlemen. That's a spirit that they brought into the schools. Yep. I'm, I'm going to bring you back. Watch this. Well, if we go back, ladies and gentlemen, to 2019, December 2019, before we got hit with this great darkness that ended up with people doing this. From that point forward, the entire world descended into fear and darkness. The whole world. I mean, and I don't think there was ever a time when the whole world descended into fear. Mm. And the spirit of fear is so powerful that God says it takes three spirits to, to, to defeat it. For it says, for the Lord in heaven given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Mm -hmm. So one needs three. And so when that fear came in, everything else piggybacked on the back of it. And you'll notice that that's when all this stuff started happening in the schools. That's when things went absolutely crazy. And I remember back then sitting there online saying, you know, guys, this pendulum is swinging way on the other side to the darkness you do realize it's got to swing all the way back to the other side and i say i don't think people understand what's coming you can't swing that far in the darkness that far in the fear that far into everything else 
and the pendulum don't swing back and then balance itself. And so what we see happening now is we see that pendulum swinging the other way and it's a war for territory. So now that has been, been identified as spiritual territory. Mm -hmm. So now there's a fight for that territory, which in turn is a fight for the generations. And Cliff, when you think about it, God is a generational God. That's why mm -hmm. when he blessed Abraham, he said, I will make your, your generations as many as the sands of the sea, uh, yeah. as many as the stars in the sky. And the kingdom of darkness is generational also. They want mm -hmm. generations that, that that come unto them. And so that's the battleground. And somebody, I'm not sure who it was, somebody somewhere identified, oh, no, this is the battleground. Or the Lord said, look, this is the battleground. We're going to fight there. And I'm excited about it because um, anytime you can have um, satanic book clubs at a school, and then when somebody says, oh, we put the Ten Commandments in school and everybody lose their mind. But just last month, they was announcing satanic book clubs, and that was all good. I look at people and say, wow, are you really that wicked that you have a problem with it? Are you really that wicked? Are you cool with the satanic book club? I ain't going to talk about the rest of the stuff that's there, but we're just going to focus on the satanic. The, we, the rest of the stuff that's there is insane. Yeah. But I'm just going to talk about the book club itself. You you cool with that, but you got a problem with the Ten Commandments being posted on the wall? The yeah. reason why they have a problem is because when you bring the spirit of God, when you bring his word in there, you bring his spirit in there. And so, therefore, all that darkness has to flee. So they don't want him yeah. in there because it's going to run out of there. Even all the way down to the teachers, the principals, they're going to fight. They're going to put up a fight, and then they're going to go. They're going to get ousted, and they know it. And the spirits behind that know it as well. So they're mm -hmm. like, no, we got to fight this. We got to fight it. And that brings us to um, well, the spiritual. Jamie, go ahead. What are you going to say? Real, real quick. It's interesting. You brought up the um, the Satanic Book Club. And as you were talking, I thought of the same thing. And I was like, man, I almost forgot about that. I did a, I did a couple videos on that a while ago. And it's I was I actually pulled up the um, the Baphomet statue right i don't know if you're familiar with that sure. yeah. um but it's interesting because that statue always has children mm -hmm. next to it and so one of the points that I, I made when i was talking about this in the past was you know you have the uh i forget the church whichever satanic church it is i can't remember exactly which one but they use that as their symbol and that's the one that's instituting this book club into these schools and that's their symbol and you want to tell me there isn't a connection between this demon and the children that they're representing in that statue and then getting into these schools and that there isn't some sort of other agenda or something they have going on. And that demon is often associated with um, the gender situation as well, because it is both male and female that that demon is. And so I don't know all that just that doesn't seem like a coincidence to me, right? Like there is too much coming together um, that aligns in, in that way. And it's very dark. And like you said, like that, uh, there were some people who oppose, like Christians who oppose this satanic book club, but other people are like, oh, no, it's fine. Like, what do you mean? Like, we live in a world now where people are like, it's cool to have Satan in the school. Like, what? I don't know. Like, it just blows my mind. And it just goes to show like the enemy is not hiding anymore. He's in our face. Nope. And he's now very much attacking our children openly. And if it, that doesn't, tell you that there needs to be just some crazy spiritual warfare prayer warriors coming in here and fighting for our children for your own children um for the children of this country like i don't know what will like intercessors got to get on on their hands and knees and start pleading to the lord because we have to fight this is these are our children this are like no one no sane person i'll say this is okay with people messing with children if you nope. hear about someone did something even people in prison are gonna mess you up if they hear you did something with children mm -hmm. and so why should that be any different in the spiritual realm we should be ready to fight for our kids and uh yeah i'll leave it at that i'll add on to it though so we talked about the millstone the scripture that talks about the millstone what people mm -hmm. don't understand is this Everybody thinks that, OK, the millstone should be tied around the neck of the people who actually put it into the, the book club, into the school. Actually, it's a spiritual setup. They're already wicked. Mm -hmm. It's the millstone that they're putting on your neck because you don't stand up to it. Yep. You get in the millstone because you allowing it to happen. And that's what I've discovered about the kingdom of darkness and the spirit realm altogether. It's legalistic. And they are. Remember the movie The Advocate? Um with al pacino have you seen that movie i have not the devil's advocate is the name of the movie well satan in the movie is a lawyer 
and mm-hmm. um and he's just running around running roughshod over people because he's a lawyer mm-hmm. and i remember watching the movie trying to figure out why would they depict him as a lawyer and that's the more i study scripture and i realized he's the accuser yeah and i was like well and he goes around roaring like a lion and he's acute well what does he accuse people at and i came to the conclusion wait there's a court of heaven where things are are discussed in his court yeah i'm like no this dude is going to court accusing you of stuff and so what these spirits are doing to you mom and dad sister and brother who just sitting back well you know they put it in that school i don't really care about it it's none of my business no 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 no. they said okay here you you're not paying attention take this millstone boom let's see let's see if we can get god to toss them into the sea and that's what ends up happening to nations that's what ends up happening to families think about it they always manipulate you into making a mistake to which you end up getting punished for whether it be somebody who pop up their phone and look at some pornography or whether it be somebody who who you get offended and you go curse somebody out off um you get angry mm-hmm. it's about you committing the sin so you can be punished yeah because they know the rules and regulations they ain't the yep. judges they know they're not the judge they know he's a judge so it's, it's crazy because they just manipulate you to destroy yourself the that same thing good. that happened with adam and eve in the garden think about it yep they made the decision <laughs> you yep. know what i'm saying he didn't no, say eat this too. he didn't do that like we're responsible for our response like that's one of my favorite sayings is like it doesn't matter like it's funny i use it a lot in marriage because like if my wife wife comes at me some type of way i'm responsible for my response not for what she did not for what she said or whatever or vice versa if i come at her some type of way and i could be out of line i could be completely wrong but she is responsible for her response. And so the enemy is going to try to trip you up in some type of way, which is one, why it's good to have discernment, be in your word, know the truth so you can identify the lies, but also like you're responsible for how you respond to that situation. If you choose to sin, you're responsible for that. Yeah, you can have demons all up in your business, but at the end of the day, you're the one who who chooses to do that. Now, I do believe that God is gracious and merciful, and I'm not going to say I can speak to how he's going to respond to every given situation, but it doesn't change the fact that we have to take up accountability and responsibility for how we handle situations. And um, what I love is that scripture tells us is that God will not allow temptation that we can't resist. So he's only going to allow up to what we can actually resist, which means that, that we have a part to play where it's saying, Hey, we, we can resist this. I'm going to choose to do the right thing. So yeah, no. And it's awesome. And I'll say this t- talking about husband and wives. I just said this on a live stream where we were talking about the dynamic between husband and wife and how the scripture says, husbands honor your wives and wives um, submit to your husbands. And I was mm-hmm. explaining that, you know, if you go look at um, the movements out here that work against women, they literally took that scripture and they said, well, I'm not going to be submissive to my husband in any way, mm-hmm. shape or form. I'm independent. But nobody reads the very end of that scripture. And it says that so that your prayers will not be hindered. That's mm-hmm. why I'd say you should in your household, there should be this dynamic. So your prayers will not be hindered. And it's important that people understand that because somebody that's going to listen to this, they're going to have uh, something going on in their household. That's not right. And you need to understand the reason why you should honor your wife, the reason why you should submit to your husband. And it made the Lord reveal to you what real submission means. It don't mean just be don't let them run over you and do crazy stuff. But it's so that your prayers won't be hindered. And everything goes back to prayer when we're talking about spiritual warfare. So they say that the Ten Commandments going in the schools, people need to be praying. They're going to all the schools, all 49 states or how many states left, because that's our weapon in warfare. Mm-hmm. It's prayer. Yep. It truly is. Think about the spiritual armor of God. Put on the helmet of salvation, a breastplate of righteousness, girt thy loins with the belt of truth, shod thy feet with the uh, gospel, the preparation of peace, um, your shield of faith, your sword of the spirit. And everybody stops there. Then it talks about praying all arts and supplications. So the last part of the armor is actually praying. Mm. And it's like people skip over that. They they and everybody quotes the spiritual armor of God, but nobody adds the last part, which is the. Oh, wow. The Internet tried to go out. Look at you. I might. Uh, can you hear me? OK, James? I got you. I got you. OK, you froze up for me. I don't know if that's my end or your end. Probably my end. OK. <laughs> what were you about to say? No, nothing. I mean, that was good. Like the prayer prayer is. So, I mean, to me, it's funny because I think people think of it as like foundational or 
um, just remedial and like the Christian walk. It's like, oh yeah, you pray. That's what you should do. But um, we don't understand like when we're when we're praying, we're going before the Creator of everything. And so mm-hmm. you know, I've heard people they they try to sound super. Uh, I don't know, special or spiritual with it when they say like, you know, it's not the prayer that's powerful. It's the one who's behind the prayer. Right. And because everyone's like, oh, prayer is powerful. But and that's true. Right. It is the one behind the prayer. But like, that's what I want to focus on is like we are we are going before God. We are. Mm-hmm. Is, is he who he says he is in his word? Because if he is, then that means that we're going to someone who can really actually do something about this. And so we often think either one prayers don't work if we've lost our faith or two. Like, it's just something that I'm supposed to be doing. And so you just kind of go through the motions with it. Um, or three, like, no, this thing is going to change the game. It's going to revolutionize everything. And so people will understand really the power of prayer, the power of the God who's behind the prayer. When you understand that, man, God, he will do mighty, mighty works. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter what your physical situation is around you. When the spiritual starts moving, that everything can shift. It doesn't matter what it is. And, and I think people just need to, to know that and recognize that when all seems lost, like you have to have faith, faith truly that God will um, will just well, make moves, you. make changes. Guys, since the Holy Spirit has led us in the direction of prayer, I want to show you guys something. James 5, 13. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any among you merry? Let him sing songs. Confess your faults to one another and pray for one another that ye may be healed. The afflicted effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avail of much. Just so you guys know, these are the assignments of prayer. Growth and transformation, petitions and requests, decrees and declarations, and warfare and intercession. And as we're talking about this, I'm realizing now the Holy Spirit said, no, you guys are literally walking through. We've talked about everything. We talked about the channels and how they grow and our channel, how God lifts men. That's done. Growth and transformation is done in prayer. And I can attest to you, this is me and Cliff's first time talking, but I know Cliff has prayed about his channel multiple times. Mm. Petitions and requests. This is when you find yourself in a situation where you need something. Um, you go into the Lord with a petition about something and requesting his help with something. Mm-hmm. Decrees and declarations. When you start talking about decrees and declarations, you're talking about, hey, I decree and declare in the name of Jesus Christ that every curse over my family has been broken. Every bloodline curse is gone. And I plead the blood of Jesus Christ against it. Then warfare and intercession is where you, where you're supposed to be daily as christians we're supposed to be on a battle in warfare and interceding for our families for the nation for your president for your children for your job and it's very important that we understand the assignments of prayer because if we understand these things then the army of darkness just doesn't run rough shot over us they, they just don't and so, guys, I wanted to show you guys that I'm gonna stop sharing it, but it's important that we understand these things, mm-hmm. and we kind of touched on it. So, for example, watch this: when we look at poli- politics as a whole, um, Republicans, Democrats, I don't care which one, both of them got wicked people in the party. Mm-hmm. And anybody who doesn't acknowledge that, then you're just being foolish. They all got wicked people. They all got people who've been bribed. They all got people who just aren't right. Well, when you go to the Lord and say, Lord, we need to get rid of these wicked people that are ruling over us. And you start asking him to judge them and remove them. When one person does it, he he's looking for a man that's praying. He's always looking for somebody that's praying. But when his children rise up and they're all asking for, which is what's going on now, if you guys, whether you believe it or not, everywhere people's like, no, Lord, we this has got to come to an end. All those prayers hit the throne. And, and if you guys know, those prayers are like, it's, it's described as those prayers are sweet aroma to his ears. So imagine mm-hmm. a whole bunch of vessels in front of him. And these aromas are coming from those vessels. May the Lord make you one of those people. Or may you be one of the people where he knows your aroma because you pray so much. But imagine what happened the day of the assassination t- attempt. Could you imagine how the scent started rising from all those vessels everywhere? Everybody praying for the nation. Every Some people praying that they wish the man was hurt. Other people praying, thanking the Lord that, you know, they just rose from those vessels. And it's important that we we pray because that is your weapon in this warfare. Mm-hmm. And I can't state it anymore. You want to get rid of a bad politician? Pray and then vote. Point blank, period. <laughs> but it starts in the realm of the spirit. It really, yeah. really does. I'm Amen. sorry, brother. I jumped off the cliff again on you, Cliff. <laughs> no, that's, no, that's good. I think, too, like just... Because I, I know people who listen anywhere on on any platform, right, are in different points in their life. And so if you're not familiar with praying, 
um, or you're not sure how to pray, uh, it really is just coming before God and just talking to him. He's a father. He's a comforter. So don't be afraid to talk to him. Um, but also learn God's heart, study the word. And as you learn his heart, it becomes easier to talk to him because now instead of, uh, it's easy to, to pray selfish prayers. We, we all do it. It's not necessarily wrong all the time, but, um, it's easy to, to just always be doing that. But when you start to learn his heart, you start to really pray for others, for the salvation of others. Um, and just really what the Lord, what his will is, his plan is for your life and for your family's life and et cetera. And so when you start to, to just study your word more and, and learn more about God, I just encourage you to do that. And, uh, just couple those things together, be in the word, be in prayer, talk to God um, and ask him to do whatever it is that he wants to do with your life. Just be a living sacrifice for him. Um, yeah. And just lay down your life to be used by him and to reveal anything that he wants to reveal to you, whether that be character flaws you have or stuff that's going on or maybe something deeper um, that, that needs revelation. Um, just again, just go before him. Even if you're shy, you're confused, you don't know what to say. Uh, it starts with just doing it. We're in warfare weekend. Let's just keep on jumping into things real quick. Watch this, guys. So my brother Cliff just so eloquently talked about prayer. Let's talk about a strategy in prayer, something that everybody can do now that I know the Lord will answer real quickly because everybody deals with it all the time. Watch this. Um, um, 2 Corinthians 10, 5, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Amen. How many of you guys out there have found yourself sitting there and imagined the future? And you're like, man, you know, I got a bill due on Monday. And OK, you weren't about the bill. You go from worry to imagining the worst case scenario that can happen to you. And then that imagination runs out of control and it starts to physically manifest in your body where now you are really worried, you're scared and all these other things happen. Or how many of you guys have found yourself in a position where um, where you think you know what to do. And you make a decision <laughs> and it don't work out the way it's supposed to because you thought you knew what was best. I'm going to teach you all a little secret that I learned and I had to learn this the hard way. If you offer those thoughts to the Lord, according to the scripture, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and understand that the knowledge of God is it's all encompassing and bring it into captivity. Every thought to the obedience of Christ. You say, Lord, your word says this is what I should do. Lord, I can't handle this imagination. And think about how those imaginations manifest. How many of you guys have had um, you on your way home from work, male or female? And for some reason. You, your wife said something or your husband said something earlier that day. And then now you've been on that same thought all day. And it's like, I got to walk into the household and this is going crazy. Or you had a bad day at work and you're still holding on to what your boss said. Mm -hmm. Or, um, or you had to go pick up your kid from school and something happened and you were embarrassed. You're holding on to all these different things. And next thing you know, you walk into the household and boom, the house blows up because there's an argument. If you just say, Lord, I cannot handle this imagination and this thought. Lord, your word says that I should bring every thought into the captivity of the obedience of Jesus Christ. Lord, please take this thought in the captivity. Take, the, take this away from me. Mm. I want to sacrifice this thought to you, Lord. It's going to be like somebody stuck a vacuum cleaner to your head. And you'll realize that, man, I'm not thinking about it anymore. And I'm, I'm saying this because. For the person who's like just starting to pray. Well, man, I don't know what to do to pray. I used to pray when I was a kid. Start with that right there. It's easy because you're going to always run into that for the rest of your walk with the Lord. It's, it's going to happen over and over again. Somebody may bring you an offense. Somebody may bring you an anger. You may just go to cuckoo land and just be sitting there imagining the worst thing that could happen. Man, maybe my son may fly in the, and die in a plane crash. And like your son is is two years old <laughs> but it, what you mean he gonna die but people have those insane imaginations yeah and those are the things that drive men and women crazy and those are the things that prime the pump for things to go wrong in households and then on the job and if you can just do that one thing you'll be walking on a road and the lord will be like hey you use that okay let me show you something else boom and then he'll show you something else boom and next thing you know you're like man you know i've learned all these little things about scripture that actually are applicable to my life and how I can use it. So I wanted to give you guys that one because I think it's very, very important. It's one that we as creators, you have to do it because there's always going to be somebody taking a shot at you. There's always going to be somebody accusing you. 
So we as creators, we have to learn how to do that. Yeah, that's good. That's good, man. You're ministering to me a little bit too. I'm thinking about still in my life now where sometimes I let my thoughts still go too far, you know, like I, I feel like I'm pretty good at just letting things go in a general sense, but sometimes I don't lean enough on the Lord when it comes to things that do bother me or upset me to just be like, you know what, God, this is in your hands. Like it's, you have it like, and just letting it go um, even quicker, even like, I, I feel like most people can, can still work on that. Right. I know I definitely, I definitely can. Um, so yeah, that's so good. Yeah, we started off. I'm asking you questions about it. This well, as soon as we started, I'm like, bro, how do you deal with this? And it's like, you know what? Let's just pray about it. Boom, boom, boom. Because that's what it is. I mean, yeah. we're all subjected to it. And honestly, that's the most vicious attack vector that the kingdom of darkness uses. It's a battle mm -hmm. inside of your mind. Yep. Think about how many times you thought you weren't handsome enough or you thought you were too skinny or you were too fat or you were too um, you didn't talk as well as you should. Mm. Those are all attacks. And here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen, the key to every attack is to get you to turn away from prayer. This is how come prayer is so powerful, because every attack is designed to get you up to a point where you don't pray. Some of you may be in a point where you're not praying. If you go back and look at your life, you may have been in a position where you were younger and you were praying. And then our day you're sitting there and you have an altar to prayerlessness. You're like, man, how did I get to this point where I never pray? It started here. Um, some of you are have been praying all the time and something happens and you just skip prayer that day and open the door. And the next thing you know, all hell breaks loose. Hmm. It really is a battle in your mind. That's why, you know, when you look at the series of events that go on, um, just for example, we're online. Right. And we see news events because it's a part of our job to see what's going on. Boom, boom, boom. But you also see how the media is assaulting people's minds. The entire T of spiritual warfare is a battle for people's mind. And that's why there's the difference in the spirit realm and the natural realm in the warfare is not that big of a difference. Because in the natural realm, they're warring for your mind, contending for your thoughts, contending for your attention. You know, for example, these phones contend for our attention all day long. <laughs> Everything exalting itself and making it an idol other than God. And then in the spirit realm, you got little things just talking to you. Hey, you know, did you think this, you know, you think you're good? Or in some cases, some people, pride is rising up in them. Well, I did this and I'm good at this and I'm good at that. And I'm this and I'm that. So it's always a battle for your mind, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm mm -hmm. sorry I'm talking so much, but I'm just saying what's you're preaching. coming out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's, all, it's all good. No, let me give um, a quick a quick testimony on actually how in my life prayer was so, so powerful. Um, it was a time where I wasn't even in the word. Um, I think I was a part of like a couple or maybe like one like small group at the time. Um, but I really wasn't reading the word on my own. I wasn't spending too much time with the Lord other than prayer. I was praying, I believe, every single day, at least once a day. Um, but at the time, I was heavily addicted to masturbation and james if you have to bleep this out later i apologize but i'm gonna speak i'm gonna speak freely on this because there's people who need to get set free from this as well and so i was very addicted to that and it was through prayer there was some some accountability but honestly it was the prayer it was a spiritual battle i knew nothing of the supernatural at the time i grew up uh in church where we didn't talk about those things or touch on those things um and so i was unfamiliar with how the demonic operate in any capacity um or any of that so i just thought this was you know some sin that i kept committing and didn't realize like truly what was behind it yes i was responsible for it i'll go back to that but mm -hmm. i didn't really realize like what was truly behind all of that um, until honestly years later, but I was delivered during that time because of my continued prayer and focus on Christ. I continued to go back. I was so focused on the sin for so long. I mean, we're talking like 10 years. I knew I shouldn't have been doing this thing, but I was so focused on it and trying to beat it with my own strength that it wasn't until I just submitted in prayer and continued to go back to Christ and realize that he's the one that I need to be focused on. And that's what pulled me out of that. Um, and again, like I wasn't even really in my word too much, like every now and then I would, I knew, I knew like most of the scriptures around like fighting lust and all of those things. So definitely be in your word. I'm not saying don't be in your word, but I'm, my point is that prayer is so powerful that it's just, it can, it can, it's what fights the supernatural. Like we, we should quote scripture at the enemy hundred percent because that's how Jesus fought the devil, right? It is written. 
but also we need to be contending in prayer um and and really fighting uh through prayer like it just it just works that's what set me free from that Every, the day that i was delivered from that i don't i don't know the date um but i have not once gone back to that and the enemy has tried the enemy will continue to tempt you and uh but it's it's not something that i struggle with it's easy for me to resist it um because the lord has set me free and and truly delivered me from it and so uh yeah, just pray, guys. Pray. It's I don't know how many times we need to say it, but if you need to hear it again, just pray. Nah, bro, I'm 100% with you. And so we talk about that in our men's Bible study. By the way, men of prayer, men of steel prayer group, it's strongmenpraying.com, guys. Strongmenpraying.com. We've talked about that particular attack and assault on men so many times. And what ends up happening, guys, and what Cliff is talking about, the more you pray, the more you enter into the presence of God. Mm -hmm. And the more you behold his presence, the more you are transformed. So when you pray, you, it's like you're pushing closer and closer and closer to this light. And you become more and more absorbed in that light. And the more you become absorbed in it, you start to turn around. And you're like, man, I have zero interest in it. I mean, you just it's done. It's over. And you're delivered from it. I'll tell you, I've been delivered from so much stuff. And my deliverance was over, I mean, over years. I still get delivered from things um, when I go into prayer. And the Lord will say, hey, come in this room and hang out with me. And let's pray and talk. So I'll get on my face, pray and talk. And next thing you know, I'm just crying. I'm like, why am I crying? No, you needed to get rid of that. Well, what was it? And then two weeks later, I found out what it is. Because there will be this circumstance that came up. And I should have reacted the way that I would have. I would have normally and for a sudden for some reason i don't have that normal reaction i don't care and then i realized two weeks later no that was a particular type of anger that was leaving me and i'm no longer subjected to it so prayer mm -hmm. is so important ladies and gentlemen that um when you saw g the fact that jesus press that enough for you just start and i'll tell you something else um you probably went through this when I wasn't praying and I wasn't going to church and I wasn't doing anything with the, with the word of God. There was this thought that was always like, well, you know, I got to be right before I go to the Lord. I got to get things together. I got to do this. That's the dumbest thing on the planet, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> if that's the thought in your mind. And that's one of the thoughts that you say, Lord, take this thought into captivity because it's an insult yeah. to God. If he's, you know, the eternal one, the one who was the ancient of days, the one who was there when there was nothing, and he knows all, sees all, hears all, then he know what you're doing, and he know what you did. <laughs> and it's like the most wicked trip trick of the devil there is. Like, he yeah, wants you're not you to come, to come to him. He wants yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, but it's laughable on the other side of it, but when you're dealing with it, you're like, man, you know, I can't do this. I gotta... And when you look at back on it's like, that was the dumbest Thing I ever thought. Why was I thinking that? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. It's, it's terrifyingly using, dumb. It's the enemy using shame and guilt to keep you from coming before the throne. But I mean, I think one of the most famous Bible stories, right, is the prodigal son, and that's how the Lord. I mean, for anyone who doesn't know, like this dude went and took his inheritance early, left, like just spent it all, like did some crazy stuff. He went to the um, club, dog. He went to yeah, the club. He yeah, was making like, it rain. He, he and literally <laughs> had to come back because he had no money, was broke, he spent every dime. And his father welcomed him back um, with such love and compassion and accepted him. And the brother was was jealous because the brother stayed by the dad and was a good son and obedient. Um, and he's like, why are you welcoming him back? He went and wasted all the money and, and all of these things. And it's like, man, it doesn't matter what we do. Like Paul tells us, you know, wherever sin abound, sin abounds, grace abounds. And so like there's always grace, no matter how bad your sin is. And now I like to emphasize on the fact that he goes on to say, does that mean we should go on sinning? No, of course not. Um, we shouldn't do that. We don't want to abuse the grace, but it doesn't matter how, how far gone you are, how bad things have been. There is always grace and the Lord is welcoming you back with open arms. Um, truly. So don't feel shame. Don't feel guilty. There's, there's a healthy shame in the fact of like, yeah, this was wrong. Like I know this thing was wrong, but don't let it stop you from coming before the father who already knows what you did. And he wants you to come to him because he's going to heal you. He's going to restore you. And he's going to set you on the right path. Um, to where you don't have to deal with those things anymore and and you can just move forward in victory nope and that that's the biggest trick man i mean my goodness that's such a vicious vicious 
guilt is such a vicious, vicious trick and trap that it's insane. So, guys, yeah. Cliff is 100% right. Daddy is sitting in heaven saying, no, come on over here. You're weary and tired. Come come talk to me. Let's get it together. And I'm going to help you get it together. And as long as you understand that about him, just run to him. Mm -hmm. Don't walk. I mean, just run. And I'll tell you guys something else. This is the last thing I'm going to say because we're running out of time. <laughs> Another secret I learned. Most people go through life and they kind of get beat up. Some of it is from the kingdom of darkness. Other parts of it is the God chasing and chastising you. The way to get out of the trap of just getting beat down <laughs> is just to make a decision and to admit that you can't do it. Like you don't know what's best. You're not that smart. You're not that pretty. You're not that Lord. I don't know what I'm doing. I submit myself to you and I humble myself to you. You know all things. I repent. I'm sorry. And the ease, it's kind of like being in a washing machine and there's a latch on the inside of the washing machine, but you refuse to just open the latch and stop the spin cycle. You're just going to spin in a cycle like this, <laughs> spinning and spinning. When there's a latch right there, all you got to do is just pop the latch open and it stops. But most people go through their life just in that spin cycle, spinning, mm -hmm. spinning, spinning, spinning. When all they got to do is just humble themselves and admit they don't know. Now, you're going to get to the point one way or the other <laughs> where you know that you don't know. You might get to it in this lifetime or you might get to the point when you leave your body. When you leave your body, you're going to know all things. But it's just so much easier just to be like, look, I made all these mistakes. I'm trying everything around me. I'm trying to do everything. And I just don't know what I'm doing. And I'll tell you guys, this channel grew because I find, I said, Lord, I give this to you. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm doing. You can have it. And I give it to you. You can bless who you want to bless through it. You can promote who you want to promote through it. You, the money can go wherever you want it to go. How about I just admit to you, I don't know. And so, phew, skyrocket. And I do that with every area of my life. Something yeah. with my kids, Lord, I don't know. What You got all the knowledge. What should I do? And it just, that posture of submission, and it's really simple. I don't know. That simple. If you can get to that point, the Lord will work with you and he'll mold you and fix all these little things in your life. Just submit, which most people don't want to do. Yeah. But try it. Trust me, That's guys. Good. Try it. That's good. All right, Cliff, we're up on the end of time. Your channel is pretty big. His channel is named after him, and it's pretty freaking big, guys. And it's awesome. You got to go see. It's awesome. I get the shorts on my feed all the time. And he's always at the bottom. You know, he's at the top pointing up. And he just says some of the most profound things in 30 seconds to a minute that you just won't think about. And I tell you, submit to subscribe to the channel because look at it like this. It'll be a part of your daily feed where you're getting fed from the Lord because, you know, he's a man of God. Mm -hmm. And I'll submit this to you. The more you start to consume things. Or they're going to pop up in your feed and that's going to be a part of you learning throughout the day. So mm -hmm. that's my sales point for you guys subscribing. That's why <laughs> I subscribe, because I know that little rule and law is, hey, man, the more I'm getting fed on a daily basis, I get to pick what I'm being fed. So I'm not going to choose to look at no celebrities. I'm going to choose to look at things of God. And then the Lord just starts talking me through that. I'll be waking up, going somewhere. I watch a video. Oh, what's this? Bing. Oh, he's talking about this. Five minutes later, I'm dealing with the same thing. Mm. And so, guys, I encourage you guys to do it. Cliff, brother, I appreciate you joining me, man. You are freaking awesome. And I heard the kid in the background, so you probably need to spend some time because it's a little bit late. Um, yeah, sorry. If I think my son was out there. Yeah, he's he's one and a half, so there's no telling what he's going to do. <laughs> Bro, I don't have no problem with no kid yelling. And anybody <laughs> listening that got a problem with a kid yelling, you crazy. <laughs> Nobody got no problem with no kids yelling. That's that's what kids do. They play, they yell, they run around. Yeah. Later on, he's going to be running in the room, grabbing a microphone, swinging it around while you're trying to record. So get yeah. ready for it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Get ready for it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are signing off. Cliff, just tell them a little bit more. Do you have a website they can go to? Or is it only the channel? I don't have a website yet. Um, that is in the near future. But yeah, all my channels are just Cliff Buell. Um, I, I appreciate, James, what you said about them. Make sure that I am not your only source of what you're getting fed. Make sure you are in your word. You're praying. You're spending personal time with the Lord. Get plugged into a local church if you're not. Um, but as you're on the Internet, as you're on social media, um, like James said, definitely subscribe to people who are going to feed you um, things that you you should be fed and not, you know, this other garbage that's out there. Um, 
but yeah, that's you can find me, like I said, at Cliff Buell on every platform that I'm on. Um, but it has been a pleasure to be here, James. I, I really do appreciate it. It's been fun. Enjoy the conversation. And I really hope and pray that this blesses at least one person out there. If it blesses one person, uh, I'm grateful for that. And I'm happy about that. Oh, awesome sauce. Guys, something just popped in my mind. He mentioned church. I won't say this. There's going to be some of y'all who listen to us talk about church and be like, well, man, I haven't been to church in years because all they do is take money. They do this and they do that. <laughs> I want to explain something to you because I was there. That's a grave, grave mistake. It's a grave mistake and it's another trap. Do not mm -hmm. get caught in that trap. Now, you want to find a church that's a decent church. You don't want to find no church where they booty shaking on the, on the pulpit. <laughs> don't go there. If you walk in and they're twerking on a the pulpit, then turn around and walk out. But you want to find a decent church because understand that you are not the judge. Mm -hmm. There's only one judge and he going to judge that. But when you go in there, the Lord is either going to feed you the word there or he's going to send you somewhere else Yep, where you get the word. But you got to make that effort. And yep. don't worry about the fact that you haven't been there. Don't say stuff like, I ain't been to church so long. If I walk in the doors, I'm going to melt. Don't say silly stuff like that. Mm -mm. Just go. Trust me. Yep. Just go. And don't worry about nothing else. Don't worry about, oh, these people going to look at me. Don't worry about that. They got their own problems. Everybody in that building is going to have a problem. They just You just in your head about your problem. Just like they in their head about their problem. Nobody mm -hmm. in there is going to be perfect. So don't expect perfection from anybody because you ain't perfect. But go and let the Lord do his work on you. Trust me. Just go. If you're listening to me and you trust me and you ain't been going, trust me, go. And the Lord will tell you something's wrong. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are out of here. I appreciate each and every one of you guys for watching this. And I'm hoping you enjoying the weekend. It's going good for me. I'm talking to a bunch of phenomenal people, and all these guys are super-duper awesome. All right, Cliff, we're out of here, buddy. See you later. All right. God bless.